We are back with yet another year's worth of horrible video games. Fortunately, however, 1996 actually wasn't that bad of a year, certainly when it comes to games. We can't speak for anything else because, frankly, that is not our area of expertise. On the awesome end of the gaming scale, there was Super Mario 64, Tomb Raider, Quake, Tekken 2, Diablo and Resident Evil, and that's barely scratching the surface of all the great titles that came out that year. Even those that were in receipt of lower review scores weren't that bad, in fact. Without spoiling things too much, the game that we're crowning the worst of 1996 actually got a better review score than Rushdown, the game in the number 10 spot, on our worst games of 1999 list. Still, there were games released in 1996 that were worse than most, and we're here to share them with you today. Once again, we've looked into the Game Rankings archives to find the title with the worst review scores, and as always, they must have had at least seven professional reviews in order to qualify. Are you ready? I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are the 10 worst games of 1996. Number 10. Andretti Racing. PlayStation. 65.86%. We're kicking off this list with a game that really isn't that bad, it's just that unfortunately there were a number of games released in 1996 that were much better. As the title might suggest, Andrati Racing is focused on getting behind the wheel of a fast car and zooming around a track as fast as you can in order to beat all of the other racers. Far from drawing the ire of reviewers, most actually found Andretti Racing to be a competent game, and although unlikely to go down in the history books, the variety of cars, drivers and tracks was more than enough to satisfy even the pickiest of players. The AI was challenging enough to pose a threat of losing the odd race, but not so gruelling that you'd want to tear your hair out, and the sound wasn't unpleasant either. Though few and far between, however, Andrati Racing did have its critics, and although it was quite fun to play, some were unhappy with the game's graphics, which were occasionally glitchy, and the overall similarity of the track designs. All in all, though, there were probably far worse things to find in your stocking that Christmas. Number 9. Contra Legacy of War PlayStation 63.57% this isn't the first time we've seen a Contra game on one of these lists, however, unlike C, the Contra Adventure, Contra Legacy of War was kind of alright. The main issue that critics had with the title was that it didn't live up to the expectations set by its predecessors. Up until the release of Legacy of War, the Contra games had all been run-and-gun side-scrollers, and it was only when development moved from Konami to Appaloosa Interactive that the series went 3D. And when we say 3D, we mean the type that comes with the flimsy cardboard glasses, which did somewhat backfire for Legacy of War because most people just thought it was a gimmick. Aside from the visuals, which most found were not enhanced in any way by the use of 3D, most reviewers thought the game was an okay action title. Though the change in perspective made it lose some of that classic Contra feel, it did retain many of the weapons and power-ups from previous games, so the atmosphere wasn't completely gone. In summary, if you like Contra, you probably won't hate this, and if nothing else, at least it's better than see the Contra adventure. Ugh. Number 8. Z, or Z if you want to get American about this, PC, 63.53%. Question time! If a real-time strategy game is described by a critic as the alcoholic, head-banging, gap-toothed, punch-drunk, inbred cousin of Command & Conquer, does that mean it's a good game or a bad game? No, seriously, someone please tell us because we have no idea. What does that even mean? Fortunately, other reviewers were slightly less cryptic in their appraisals, and we've been able to come to the conclusion that Zed, or Z if you want to get American about this, is pretty alright as RTS games go, but sadly it did still review worse than most other games of the year, and so has landed itself on this list. In terms of gameplay, most critics found themselves having a good time with Zed, or Z if you want to get American about this, and even went as far as to praise it for its lack of resource management mechanics, which meant that the game was focused on raw strategy rather than keeping tabs on how much iron ore you've accrued. In fact, the only real negativity that anyone could come up with was that it was a bit on the short side. So if you're after something you can sink days into, Z or Z if you want to get American about this probably isn't for you. A word of caution, if you plan on seeking out Z or Z if you want to get American about this, go for the PC version as it turns out that the 2011 mobile re-release is a big old bag of ploppers. Number 7. NBA In The Zone 2 PlayStation 63.25% 
Oh yeah, here we go. Sports time. I'm not going to do the whole spiel because by now, you know it by heart. Sing along. In terms of its review score, NBA In The Zone 2 actually fared better with critics than its predecessor, but that still didn't stop them from having some opinions. The game did garner a great deal of praise for its graphics, which most reviewers found to be excellent. Players looked very realistic, the play animation was nice and smooth, and the camera angles have a good view of the action. Where NBA In The Zone 2 fell down, however, was in its gameplay, which several critics accused of lacking depth. The features that the game did have were executed competently, but the problem was that it didn't bring much more than dunking and shooting three-pointers to the table. Many critics also found the gameplay to be quite slow, which meant that NBA In The Zone 2 lacked any of the excitement of its real-world counterpart, though one reviewer did say that the leisurely pace of the game would make it perfect for a newcomer to the genre who needs to learn the controls. So, you know, silver linings. Number 6. Star Wars Dark Forces PlayStation 59.57% here, boys and girls, we have a great example of a good game whose console version completely screwed the pooch, because the PC and Macintosh versions of Star Wars Dark Forces actually received a decent amount of praise from critics, while the PlayStation Edition made very few friends. Although the vast majority of the game carried over successfully, there were elements of the PlayStation version, namely the awful graphics, that upset players. On the whole, the actual gameplay was pretty decent, and considering that it was inspired by fan-made Doom mods, there really is little wonder. See, shortly after the events of A New Hope, the game follows rebel mercenary Kyle Katarn as he uncovers and works to put a stop to the Empire's Dark Trooper project. The main problem with the PlayStation version of Star Wars Dark Forces was the severe graphical downgrade it got when compared to the PC and Mac versions. Although the story, level design, and puzzles were all the same, everything was so blocky and pixelated that it took away from players' enjoyment of the game. The frame rate was choppy, and one critic even went as far as to call the game grainier than a loaf of bread. I want to go home and rethink my life. <laughs> Number 5. Phantasmagoria – A Puzzle of Flesh – PC 55.88% we're not going to lie, when we first heard of Phantasmagoria A Puzzle of Flesh, we assumed it would have something to do with what the Jigsaw Killer did with all those skin bits he takes from his victims. I've heard if you put them all together you get a really nice picture of Neil Buchanan, but I digress. Like its predecessor, Phantasmagoria A Puzzle of Flesh gained notoriety upon its release for its controversial violence and sexual conduct which led it to be heavily censored or banned in a number of countries. Once you get past all of the scandal, however, A Puzzle of Flesh just isn't all that good, because the vast majority of the game was FMV, it meant that there wasn't an awful lot of interactivity for the audience. They also found that what puzzles were on offer were nonsensical, whilst at the same time not being all that difficult to solve. The portion of the game in which you get your pet rat to fetch your dropped wallet from under the couch rather than, say, moving the sofa, is a particular highlight. Throw into the mix a plot with more holes than your average sieve, gratuitous sex scenes and poor pacing, and the only thing frightening about the title is the fact that people actually spent their hard-earned cash on it. Number 4. Santa Fe Mysteries – The Elk Moon Murder – PC 54.57% if done well, there are few things more captivating to an audience than a good whodunit, and video games like L.A. Noir and Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney prove that playing detective in a video game is something that players love to do. Sadly, Santa Fe Mysteries The Elk Moon Murder failed on a number of fronts to grab the audience with its tale of Anna Elk Moon, a famous Native American artist who is found dead. Critics lambasted the game for its lack of interactivity, owing yet again to the fact that it was mostly full-motion video, rendering it as little more than a soap opera with the odd element of point and click. A number of critics also found the game to be overly convoluted, even for a murder mystery, and quickly got bored of the suspects who would ramble on for long periods of time without really saying much. Come on, get to the point, I've got to pick the kids up from school! Some praise was given to the game for its graphics and sound, but considering the fact that it was filmed rather than programmed, those things really aren't that much of an achievement, are they? A twisted web, and we are not finished untangling it, not yet. Number 3. Mortal Kombat Trilogy Nintendo 64 51.9% once again, we have a title whose reception varied wildly from platform to platform. Whilst one or two publications thought very highly of Mortal Kombat Trilogy for the Nintendo 64, most preferred the PlayStation version, which ended up with a much higher average review score, beating the N64 version by 15 whole percent. 
The praise was given to the Mortal Kombat trilogy on the N64 for its faithfulness to the arcade title that spawned it, as well as the vast array of content, absence of load times, and addition of the aggressor meter mechanic. On the more negative side of things, critics were unable to agree whether or not the music and sound effects were poor, or whether they were simply limited by the capabilities of the console. But it was clear that they weren't as good as those that PlayStation owners got to experience instead. There were also complaints levelled at the graphics, which some felt let down by, especially in comparison to other N64 games, as well as missing animation frames and the characters from the arcade version that were left out entirely. Even with all of that said, however, it still didn't manage to be as bad as Mortal Kombat Advance, so nice job. Number 2. Cruisin' USA, Nintendo 64, 50.63%. Sadly, those who did go cruise in USA very much wished they hadn't bothered, as the title ended up being one of the most disappointing of 1996. Although the arcade version of Cruise in USA ended up being both a commercial and critical success, becoming one of the top five best-selling arcade titles of 1994, the Nintendo 64 port was a complete shambles. One of the biggest problems with the title was its graphics, with players being treated, in very heavy quotation marks, to some of the shoddiest frame rates they'd seen in a while, which was particularly upsetting considering that the N64 had decent processing power, at least for the time. In addition to this, crews in USA also suffered for dodgy collision detection, so even if you could get past the graphical problems, it was still a nightmare to play, and at the end of it all, it didn't even have much variety in terms of its content. Despite all of its shortcomings, however, crews in USA actually managed to sell pretty well and ended up being the sixth best-selling game of the 1996 Christmas shopping season. What? Were all the good games released that year just too intimidating for you all? Come on. Number 1. Beyond the Beyond PlayStation 44.38% it's somewhat refreshing for the number one spot on a list like this to be taken up by a game that divided critics rather than uniting them all in hatred, however it does make us feel a little bit bad for calling Beyond the Beyond the worst game of 1996. Still, the averages on game rankings don't lie, and nobody ever said this job was easy, so here we are. Unlike many other terrible games we've come across over the years, on a purely technical level, Beyond the Beyond wasn't awful, or at least nothing about its graphics controls or sound were bad enough to be noteworthy. What critics took issue with was just how underwhelming the game was, especially when compared to other RPGs of the time. Many reviews said that the story was dull and derivative, though the odd one did note that fans of role-playing games would probably still enjoy it, even though it didn't bring anything new to the table. The dialogue, which was overly long and tedious, also drew complaints from critics, and the ridiculously frequent enemy and boss encounters, as well as the steep difficulty curve, were also serious problems. So congratulations, Beyond the Beyond. We hereby crown you the worst game of 1996. We just hope there's some comfort in knowing that you're at least better than half the garbage that came out of 1999. So there we are.